discussing this month. And, and you know, it ties in to the very purpose for the existence of Daystar. And I just want to take us a little bit further today. Mark chapter 10, verses 42 to 45, New Living Translation. So Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers in this world lord it over their people, and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be the slave of everyone else. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others, and to give his life as a ransom for many. We have established one thing clearly this month. A Jesus follower must lead differently. A Jesus follower must lead differently. Our world is in desperate need of good leadership right now. And we believe that the followers of Jesus Christ should produce the highest quality leadership in our world right now. I should remind you that we have what we call the Great Commission, right? The Great Commission in Matthew 28, where Jesus said, go into the world and teach all nations. When you look closely at the Great Commission, honestly, it's a leadership mandate. Let me read it from the Message Bible, Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go out and train everyone you meet, far and near, in this way of life, marking them by baptism in the threefold name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then instruct them in the practice of all I have commanded you. Instruct them in the practice of all I have commanded you. I'll be with you as you do this day after day after day, right up to the end of the age. You see that? Go and train everyone you meet. That's what he said. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? It's in your destiny in Christ to be a trainer, to be a mentor, to be an influencer of others. That's why Christ said you're the light of the world. He said you're the salt of the earth. In God's provision, you are not meant to leave people the way you met them. Okay? So this is more than getting people born again, the Great Commission. Because we used to think it was getting people to be saved, to be free from their sins. That's a major part of it. Of it. That's the starting point. But that's not all there is to it. Okay? It's about mentoring people in God's way of life. Remember how Christ described leadership outside of God's system in Mark 10, 42. So Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers in this world lord it over their people, and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. So that's the basic system in our world, that people dominate the weak, that leaders take as much as they can for themselves. It's a system driven by selfishness, driven by greed. Hear what God said to Israel when they asked for a king. 1 Samuel 8, verses 10 to 21, Message Bible. Yeah, I'm reading, I want the Bible to speak for itself. <laughs> so I'm reading a large portion. 1 Samuel 8, 10 to 21, Message Bible. So Samuel said to them, delivered God's warning to the people who were asking him to give them a king. He said, this is the way the kind of king you're talking about operates. He'll take your sons and make soldiers of them. Chariotry, cavalry, infantry, regimented in battalions and squadrons. He'll put some to forced labor on his farms, plowing and harvesting, and others to making either weapons of war or chariots in which he can ride in luxury. He'll put your daughters to work as beauticians and waitresses and cooks. He'll conscript your best fields, vineyards and orchards and hand them over to his special friends. He'll tax your harvest and vintage to support his extensive bureaucracy. Your prize workers and best animals he will take for his own use. He'll lay a tax on your flocks and you'll end up no better than slaves. The day will come when you will cry in desperation because of this king you so much want for yourselves. But don't expect God to answer. But the people wouldn't listen to Samuel. No, they said, we will have a king to rule over us. Then we'll be just like all the other nations. Our king will rule over us and lead us and fight our battles. Samuel took in what they said and rehearsed it with God. Okay? 
God told them the result. This system is built on sinful human nature. It does not have the capacity to handle power well. They said, no, we want it that way. But this is what I want to say today. Jesus said, but with you, it must be different. So I'm saying here that most of us have been raised on a heavy diet of this this leadership system that is built on self-centeredness and greed. And we need to get it out of our system. We need to get it out of our system. It is there. (laughs) It is there. We need to get it out of our system. So how did Christ do it? Hmm? How did Christ do it for his disciples? We discussed it last week. He washed their feet. He served them. He served them and washed their feet. That thing that he did killed something in them that day. It killed the domineering version of leadership in them. You notice Peter refused. Peter protested. Lord, it does not work that way. (laughs) I'm the one that should wash your feet. I'm paraphrasing, right? It does not work that. Why should you, the leader, be washing my feet? I'm the one that should wash you wash yours. You remember what Jesus said? If I don't wash your feet, you have no partner, Lord, in me anymore. You are out of this system, out of this agreement. What I called you that you were going to do, it will never happen again. You will lose your calling. Then Peter said, ah. I didn't know it was as serious as that. Please wash everything. Wash me from the head, from my head to my feet. Peter wanted to dodge being served by Christ. That's how Christ killed the domineering system of leadership in them, by serving them. The way you are led is the way you will lead. Many people in leadership today don't have human feeling. They don't care about the poor. They don't care about people suffering because nobody cared about them too. Most of us grew up in environments like that, impoverished, suffering, while some are living in extensive luxury based on our commonwealth, right? The way you are led is the way you will lead. And that thing was inside the disciples of Christ. He had to get it out. And the way to get it out was not to curse them. It was not to insult them. It was to love them sacrificially. He loved them to the point where he died for them. They watched him literally die. Peter watched him literally die before his eyes. Christ served Peter. Served Peter and washed his dirty feet. Something died in Peter that day. Now let me read to you what the same Peter would say later. In 1 Peter 5, 2-4. to The Passion Translation. 1 Peter Five, two to four, the Passion Translation. To be compassionate shepherds who tenderly care for God's flock and who feed them well. For you have the responsibility to guide, protect, and oversee. Consider it a joyous pleasure and not merely a religious duty. Lead from the heart under God's leadership. Not as a way to gain finances dishonestly, but as a way to eagerly and cheerfully serve. Don't be controlling tyrants, but lead others by your beautiful examples to the flock. And when the shepherd king appears, you will win the victor's crown of glory that never fades away. Oh, the same Peter. If he had escaped having Christ wash his feet, Having Christ serve for him, he would then have had the right to dominate other people. It would have been possible for Peter to be a a tyrant of a leader. But that dimension of Peter died the day Christ washed his feet, served him. So what am I saying? What's the principle that we're pulling out from here? The way we break this cycle of leadership by selfishness, leadership by greed, Leadership that consumes instead of distributing. The way we kill it is by serving people and loving them sacrificially. 
I wish there was a better way. But this is the example that Christ gave us. Have you noticed? Sometimes we insult people in leadership positions. We curse them and it doesn't change anything. I've been around only a few decades and I have seen, I've had curses and curses and curses being unleashed on people in leadership position and it's just getting worse. It's not changing anything. Christ did not come to curse Iran. <laughs> you know, he did not come to curse anybody. He just knew you don't have control over the whole world, but you have control over the people closest to you. Love them sacrificially. Serve them. Serve them. Kill that thing, that nature, that desire for selfishness and greed by serving people and by loving them. It's amazing. It's time for us to break this cycle of pain, this cycle of hunger, this cycle of selfishness that enriches a few and impoverishes the many. It's time to break that cycle. Disciple of Christ calling on you today that Jesus Christ is expecting of us a new kind of leadership, a different kind of leadership. I watched videos this year of some people and those videos, in fact, this week, just a few days ago, and those videos broke my heart. Broke my heart. Someone, you know, saying he's asthmatic. Sadly, the company that produces the asthmatic drugs that he uses in Nigeria packed up and left the country. And now it's, it's, it's a third party distributor that is distributing uh, their products. And he said he used to buy this box of, of medicine that he would use, I think, in a month for 8,500 naira. And he showed the label on it at the pharmacy, 52,000 naira now. I cringed. And there's the other one, the inhaler, right, <clears throat> that he used to buy for how much? And the price has also multiplied, right? Then he said, so how am I supposed to be able to afford this when my whole take home for the month is 45,000 naira. See, that's not even enough to buy the pack of drugs. It broke my heart. Market women talking about how much they were buying uh, fish or their goods some months ago. And then how expensive they become now. And saying it was, it's whatever they sell in the course of the day that gives them money to feed their children, to feed their families. I, I shuddered. I was in pain. Right? And I know it's when you don't understand the issues, when you don't dig deep enough, you think it's about politics. It's not about politics. It's, this, it's the same scenario, whether it is military, whether it is democracy, whether it is one party or the other. What we are dealing with here is the same nature. It's sin, period. <laughs> the root definition of corruption is illegal behavior. Now, illegal behavior is sin. It's the nature every human being is born with. That's why Christ went for that instead of cursing anybody, <laughs> right? Christ went for that. And the way to deal with it is to just love the people within our influence, right? Let's use the Jesus pattern to break the cycles of leadership in our world right now. For example, it's time to show children love. It's time to show children love. They've got to go to good schools. If there's anything we can do about it, please do it. These kids need to be raised in good environments, environments of excellence. They need to be raised with solid moral values. And they need to develop the capacity to think and to be creative. We've done the little bit that we can do. We founded the school, right? Apart from the fact that we have our junior church and we try to give it our best shot, we also started the school. And it's a beautiful school, right? Because we think it's actually where we have the best opportunity to raise role models. 
And I would call on other churches. We started small, I think with two kids in daycare. We started with the daycare, right? And now we have a beautiful, big facility, you know, for the kids. Start from somewhere. The space that you use for junior church, if you have control over it, I plead with pastors. Missionary societies run schools in Nigeria for some 50 years, even before the colonial government got involved in education. So we've not got any excuse, right? Just do the little bit that you can. And for those of us that are in government, if you can do anything, please make sure these kids take their lessons in good schools and that the teachers are also taken care of. Amen? Mm-mm. Everyone comes from some family, am I right? So let's start from our families and show love. The purpose of the anointing is problem solving. And we've been receiving loads and loads of the anointing. Amen. <laughs> Woo, thank you, Jesus. The purpose of the anointing is problem solving. But not just your own problems. <laughs> the problems of others. Turn this stone into bread. It's a temptation from Satan to use the power of God to convert stone to bread to feed yourself. Christ had not eaten for days and Satan wanted to leverage his deprivation to get him to use the power of God for a selfish reason. So the fact that, oh, you have suffered, oh, you, 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 you lack this, you lack that, is actually not a good enough excuse to use the power of God and to turn it on yourself. If you are the son of God, turn this stone into bread. It's a temptation to selfishness. Christ had the power to do it. He did not do it. But when it came time to feed the crowd, Christ used that power to multiply bread and fish and fed the crowd. Hallelujah. That is the Jesus kind of leadership. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Who believes? that we can have a new kind of leadership, the Jesus kind of leadership, and that it will bless our world. Let's go ahead and say a prayer. I want you to pray, say a prayer of commitment right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I accept the instruction that you gave that I should lead differently. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, yes, Lord, I commit to lead differently, to love sacrificially, and to lead by serving to wash other people's feet, to make life better for others with all the resources you give me, spiritual, mental, psychological, emotional, physical, material, financial, to make life better for others. And I thank you because when that day comes, I will get my reward for, living, for leading differently in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me pray. Let me pray for us. Father God, in Jesus' name, I present to you everyone that is a part of this service today as we celebrate the 28th anniversary of Daystar Christian Center. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. You have done amazing things. You have raised from our church people that care, people that have love, genuine love for others, people that are serving serving in government, serving in the business world, serving in schools, serving in hospitals, serving in churches, serving all over the world. We thank you. And now, Heavenly Father, as a church, we ask, take our harvest, the testimonies we have now. Father God, turn them into a seed and multiply the impact of this star thousands of times over in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, that means that we are asking that you take every one of us praying together today and that you multiply our capacity and multiply your love in our hearts and multiply our impact, multiply our influence, positive influence on our world many times over in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Whatever stands between anyone and the fulfillment of their destinies, we bury them. In the name of Jesus, we remind you, Heavenly Father, the night before this star was inaugurated, 
we covenanted this church to you. We took the communion and covenanted this church to you. It's your property, not anybody's property. So, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we receive the blessings of that covenant on everyone that is a part of this time now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let your power preserve their lives. Let your power prosper them. And let your power enable them, Heavenly Father, to be a blessing to their world. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for the person present in this service who says my relationship with not, is not okay with God, actually. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. Thank you. And thank you because all we have to do now is to ask you and you forgive us. And I thank you for that honest person right now who is about to say that prayer. Just before we say that prayer, can I ask you, if you're that honest person, put your hand on your heart. Pastor, I can't be lying before God. My relationship with God is not okay. You may be a part of our service physically or on TV or online. Can you just put your hand on your heart? I want God to forgive me my sins. I want to lead differently. God bless you as I pray for you. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for my brothers and sisters who are saying this prayer right now. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you because there's forgiveness for them in the name of Jesus. If your hand is on your heart, can you say this prayer after me? Dear God, I believe that Jesus paid for my sins. I ask you to forgive me and to accept me as your child in Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we're grateful. Jesus said there's joy in heaven among the angels when this happens. So we're grateful because this is a miracle. The nature of sin is removed from our brothers and sisters and your nature is put in them now. So we just ask, Father, teach them to know you personally. 